Hi everybody, thanks for joining us today. Uh, my name is Rick Segris and I'm an account executive here with CAE Mining and I'll be chairing today's event. So joining us today from our Denver office is Darlan Arajo. Uh, Darlan is a senior mining consultant and he's been with the group for about 10 years now. Uh, today he's going to be showing us how to get the most bang for our buck using MSO. Uh, so the floor is yours, Darlan. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for taking your time to watch our um, Mineable Shape Optimizer, the MSO. Uh, we are going to start with a little bit of background history uh, about our product, and then we are going to jump ahead in the middle of the presentation to show a demonstration of the product. Okay. So. Um, the MSO has been developed as part of Primal and Pharos projects, okay? And CA Mining is one of the leaders and sponsors of the project. Uh, the MSO version 1 was primarily released in 2009 by Datamine, and then uh, CAE purchased Datamine, um, and uh, the MSO version 1.1 was released by CAE Mining last year in January. And uh, the MSO 2.0 is planned to be released this year in 2014. Okay. MSO is an underground stop optimizer that uses geological block model together with financial and mining practical parameters to generate the most optimized stops as possible. It can handle from very narrowed veins up to massive ore bodies. Um, it also uh, can, you can, the user can use uh, folding uh, parameters to guide how the stops are going to be generated. It also respects the pillars uh, as the user is going to uh, define and set the parameters of minimum and maximum width of each stop. The system knows where it's going to place the, the pillars and also the, the size of them. The, the MSO key benefit is basically, uh, to start with, it's uh, the design efficiency, okay? While it may take days and, and even weeks to design uh, the stops manually, uh, the MSO can run different, different scenarios uh, in just, a, in just hours or depending on the, the, the size of the block model and the, the parameters. And also, um, as MSO optimizes the, 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 the size of, the, the, size of the, the stops, it, uh, it doesn't loss in R, and also it improves the, the dilution, it decreases the dilution as well. So basically, the inputs of the MSO are a block model with grades, densities, and or values, okay? And it also can be rotated or orthogonal, okay? Also, optionally, you can use a geological wireframe that controls the direction, the strike, and the dip that uh, MSO is going to generate these stops. The outputs basically are uh, wireframes, strings, and report. So in this example that you see in the screen, you are going to see a block model that you can have different veins in the same block model. And uh, in this case, the user uh, designed uh, a surface that controls the, the stop creation, okay? And the result is the op uh, optimized stops 
respecting the foldings. Okay, um, if you have, if, if the, the, the R body has two or more different veins, the NSO actually calculates if it's better to create just one stop for, that combines both of veins, as you can see in the screen. The, uh, in this case, the R body splits into little uh, R bodies. And uh, the MSO calculates if it's better to, to keep as the, the, the stops separately or combine them in just one stop. So how it works, okay? Based on the, the user-defined framework, which is the area that the, the, the user is going to define, okay, uh, MSO works uh, depending on the orientation, if it's XZ, YZ, YX, or XY. And uh, based on the, 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 the wireframe control, it's going to create a seed in each uh, location, and it's going to unyield and create the best as possible. Okay? Again, respecting the mining parameters. So let's talk a little bit about, about each version, what's, what each version is capable of. Uh, the first version, the 1.0, uh, the user can create optimized uh, stops using a fixed interval vertically. So. Uh, in case the, the user wanted to create stops with different heights, okay, he would have to, to uh, create different scenarios or different case studies and then uh, combine them later. Okay? Also, the user can, was able to uh, I, set the minimum and maximum size of the stope, as well as the minimum pillar width. Okay. Um, also, he could set the near and far wall dilution. And uh, just a comment on this one. The, the near and far wall dilutions are set as units of distance. For example, one meter or two feet, okay? It's not in percentage. The outputs, okay, are wireframes, strings, and the main report that presents the average of all grades and tonnage and volume for each stop, generated stop, and by domain. So in this case, this version is ideal for sub-vertical uh, or bodies, okay? So, in 2013, if I'm not mistaken, um, it, uh, the version 1.1 was released, and uh, the options for, to, to, to generate the framework based on the, the X, Y, and why X orientations was possible, so were possible. So uh, with this feature, it was possible to generate stops for sub-horizontal deposits or bodies. Okay, so it added much more flexibility on how to create the, the stops. So also it added more flexibility to generate the subshapes as well. As, as we are going to see a little bit later in this presentation. Um, back in MSO 1.0, it was, the evaluation was done and uh, it was called fast evaluation, where if the center of the block, the center point of the block fell inside 
of the stop, it was evaluated. However, if it the centroid of the block of the block fell uh, outside of the stop, it wasn't evaluated. So in this version, the 1.1, uh, a new feature uh, for evaluation was added, and it was called precise evaluation, where uh, the evaluation is done partially. Okay, so if just half of the block falls inside of the of the stop, it's going to be evaluated just the the 50% of the block. So. And the, this MSO is, was uh, released in, in our Studio 3 and Studio 5 Deep Planner softwares. The next version, the version 2.0. So we are going to talk a little bit more details further. So, but uh, in general, it, uh, it comes to, a di to add additional uh, stop frame options, customized ones, and also, you have the option to optimize the, the stop frameworks. You can add some smooth and split options as well. Okay, if in case uh, the, the the stops are generated are too big, you can split them. Also, a new output file is the center strings that helps you to create the, the development strings, okay? Also, there are more optimization parameters using this version. And also a new feature, it's going to help uh, to define the structures. Based on the structures that uh, you currently have, uh, the, the MSO is going to take into account the, the, the wireframes. And also, we have new reporting options. So basically, the version one, as you can see in the screen, only covered the fixed vertical, okay? And it was very limited. Uh, the version 1.1 came and uh, it added the, the functionality to, to create horizontal uh, frameworks as well. And outside of this area is the, all the, the features that are going to be covered by the version 2.0. So the regular intervals is, are the, 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 is the type of framework that is possible right now with version 1.0. However, in the version 2.0, you are going to be able to vary the height of the, of the, of the levels as well as uh, change the, the, the length of the sections as well. Also, you are going to be able to generate the stops based on strings that if the strings have a gradient, for example, a drainage, uh, the stops are going to be generated respecting the gradient. And the, uh, the user is going to be able to define customized framework, okay, that uh, there, uh, the system is going to try to use this type of shapes during the optimization process. So again, um, this, the system also is going to generate strings, okay, to help uh, the, the the user with the, the, the uh, as a, an output of the project and uh, uh, of the the process. And uh, the user is going to be able to define different shapes, and the system is going to try to fit, optimize the different shapes to, to fit inside of the, of the stops. So 
So the size and the combination can be defined by the user, and also you have the option to leave the system to optimize the, the shapes. Also, um, customized pillar shapes is, are going to be available as well. Uh, and also, if the subshapes overlap each other, the system is going to analyze, calculate what's the best one to, to generate as the final product. So another very good feature of version 2 is going to be uh, right now we have only the cutoff grade limit. That based on the cutoff grade, the system generates the, the, the stops. However, a new feature, which is uh, the head grade, is going to be added. Okay, so you can define one or both to generate the best stops. Okay, and these values can be defined as fixed values or values for each block if you calculate based on, on, on each cell size. Also, you have the option to have a table that has a function based on the height and the width or the tonnage. It can uh, define the value, the head grade value as well to be applied. You have the inclusion and exclusion options that you are going to be able to define what type of rock type is going to be uh, used to generate the, the, the each stop. Okay, so you can you have the ability, and also you have the a new option that's called exclusion distance. The system is going to calculate the distance from the stops. And uh, if it's too far away, um, that a distance that you set, the system is not going to generate any stops. Also, you have in a new option to report the exclusion. Okay, how much material, the tonnage, the volume of the excluded uh, ton uh, rocks. So for reporting, um, the, 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 the system is going to report the amount of voids that uh, it found during the, the, the optimization process. It also is, is going to be able to generate a wireframe for the wall dilutions, the near and far wall dilutions. It also go, is going to split in different reports uh, the undiluted, the diluted and dilution volumes as well. Uh, it also is going to have uh, the ability of report the dominant code, the majority code that is inside of the of each stop. Okay, and also is going to be able to work with find out block model. So this is a new feature, the structure. Um, the, the, the structures can, can cause an overbreak in the, in the stops, so the user optionally can define as a wireframe, okay? And the, the stops are going to be based, uh, if, if the seed is generated very close to the, to the to the, to the fault. And during the annealing process, if the system intersects with the fault, the system is going to calculate the, the angle between the fault and the, the stop, and it's going to decide if, it, if the stop is going to be expanded or not. So a new evaluation feature is going to be added as well, and uh, it's called slow evaluation. This is for 
most likely um, pr primarily uh, for rotate, rotated block models. And also, we are going to, to have an enhancement of the system to add splits and smoothing. Okay, the splits uh, can be added when the, the width of the of the stop is very big, so you can split in different stops. Okay, so you you are going to have a very sizable um, stop size as in output, and also the smooth it's going to decrease the number of corners. It's going to decrease. Uh, it's going to uh, the output. From, from one stop to another is going to be much smoother than in the previous versions. So here is one example. This option, this uh, screen shows a block model uh, and the stops that have been optimized. And uh, no smoothing smooth was applied in this case. So the next slide shows the smoothing feature that eliminates some of the corners. Okay, so it's a much more realistic scenario. And in the last last one, uh, the splitting option. Okay, if the 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 stop was too big, so the system actually split split the the, the stops in two or three three different stops. And we are going to have a different case management system that the, the, the user can manage different runs with much more flexibility than in the current version. Um, he, uh, the user can also um, define different naming conventions, okay, and uh, and, uh, and different ranges and intervals as well. So they start, the, the, the project started um, back in 2011, and it's a three-year project, development project. And uh, it's part of our cloud development. So the MSO 2.0 uh, it has been developed in using Microsoft Azure, which uses different uh, a multiple of servers. So depending on the, the 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 optimization process that you are running going to run, the MSO can be run in different processors and also different servers depending on the need. So the idea is uh, it's going to be web-based, and um, this, the, the user is going to be able to, to manage all the cases and uh, optimize the process on the servers remotely. So I'd like to, to show the uh, demonstration. I'd like to demonstrate the product. Okay. Share. Here. Share this. Okay. The screen is coming up. Coming up in a couple of seconds. So we have here uh, the MSO, the main interface, and also here on the left corner, you are going to have uh, the case studies. Okay, you can add a new case, you can copy from another project and paste into this new case. Also, as an input file, you are going to, you can add a block model, geological or resources block model. Also, an optimization field, okay, as well as the density. In the, in, on the right, you are going to be able to, 
uh, set the cutoff grade the cut or cutoff value, or you can also define the cutoff value based on the costs and prices. And the system is going to calculate the, the value for each stop. In the same screen, you can also define the strike and the, and the dip of the deposit, okay, of, or, of the ore body. However, you can also define the strike and dip based on the wireframes, uh, a geological control. Let me show you one example of a geological control. So those are wireframes represent the foldings and the general um, shape of the ore body, okay? So you can use them as a, as a control so the system is going to generate the seed for each stop based on these, these wireframes. Optionally, you can use also dynamic anisotropy controls, which means uh, if you have a strike and dip value that was previously defined in the block model, you can use those fields here. So the framework you can define based on if it's vertical or horizontal, and also you can, you can elect uh, orientation if it's striking to the east or striking to the north or south, okay? Also, you can uh, uh, define as x, y, and y, x orientations. As mentioned before, you can also use rotated block models. Uh, here, you are going to, set to configure the rotation point and also the angles. As an output data product, MSO generates the wireframes, strings, and reports. So the user is going to define the names here. And for layout, there are three different types of layout. Full shapes, which means the stops are going to be respecting the minimal size of, of a stop that uh, the, the, the user is going to define, is going to set. Subshapes uh, are stops that um, do not respect the, 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 the size, the minimal size. However, you can, def you can still have a very good idea of your deposit based on, on, this, on this option and also development. So, in the right side, in the right side, the user is able to define the minimal width of each stop and also the maximum width. So after the maximum width is reached, okay, um, a pillar is placed in that position, and uh, it, it's going to have, in this case, five meters as a minimum width. Here, you can also define near and far wall dilutions as well. And um, the user is going to define the minimum and maximum dip that your stop can, can present, okay? And uh, also, you have the option to, to define the maximum strike angle change, okay? And uh, as a, a advanced options, you can also generate uh, wireframes to verify how and where the seed was generated, and how it was the process, uh, the annealing process was performed. Also, you can uh, define some fields in the block model to be used to avoid the, the that uh, MSO. Um, generate 
stops in certain areas. Like uh, sometimes you have a huge area that uh, you don't want to generate some, some stops, so you can protect this area through a SAG. So let me close it and uh, let me show you the result of the, of the first run. So here are here is the result of the of the of the first run, the full shapes, and uh, you can color by grade or value. So you can see the high grade uh, stops as well as the low grade ones, and as you can see, it respect it respected the the geological control wireframe as well. Okay. So each stop has a number, okay, a unique number, and it's reported in another file. This file is generated, and uh, it has the average of all grades, densities, and the total tons and volumes. So this, is, this was one run. Let me close it. The second run, which was called MSO dev, okay, the only difference was um, I added some subshapes, okay, and I'm going to, to show you the result of these subshapes. So basically, almost the same, okay. However. As you can see, the, the stop was split in two different wireframes. One for the preparation, for the development, and another one for the stop itself. So sometimes it's a very, this feature is very handy to, to define the, the, the size of the stops and to avoid any manual work, design work. And for the third uh, example that uh, I would like to show, I used the horizontal um, framework just to present the, the, the potential, and also the system automatically calculated here the stops and placed the, the pillars as you can see, okay? So uh, as you can imagine, um, the, the, the amount of work, if you have to design these stops manually, it's going to take, it's very time consuming, okay? And uh, it's, it's very automatic, okay? It, it, took, it takes just a couple of hours, in my case, to run all the, the, the scenarios, okay, and all the levels as well, okay. Everything using subshapes. So that's pretty much it uh, that uh, we'd like to show. So we are open to, to questions. Good stuff, man. Yeah, so uh, we had a couple of questions come in. And just as a reminder, feel free to use the chat box to submit your questions. Um, the first question that came through was, what type of projects could this tool be applied to? Okay. Um, basically, any underground project, you can optimize the, generate the, 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 the best stops using this tool. Okay, from massive ore bodies with um, um, different orientations, especially with uh, the, the coming up version two, you are going to be able to define uh, uh, stops with gradients. So it's going to add much more flexibility during the process, during the pro optimization process. Okay, so 
uh, cutting field, uh, long haul, uh, um, descending benches, any, any type of mining methods can be applied for using this tool. Okay. Uh, second question that came through was, does this run in 5DP as well? It does, as well as Studio 3. Uh, since 2011, if I'm not wrong, uh, you can run MSO uh, in both softwares. Uh, let's see. So one of the questions that was asked, and we, we may have to answer this afterwards, uh, was sub-horizontal segments of MSO was not really well documented in either the help or online files. Mm -hmm. Will there be an update to the documentation or the help files? Yeah, we are expecting to update the, all the, the help files, okay, and uh, I agree with the, the lack of, of documentation. Okay. Okay, so we have Studio 3 and Studio 5DP versions. Uh, which one will still be valid for version 2, or will the end user be forced to upgrade the software versions? Well, the MSO2 is being developed uh, in a web-based interface using Microsoft Azure servers. So in the first, in the fir uh, when, it's going to, when it's released, uh, the MSO is going to run outside of your computer. So it's going to be on the servers, okay? Uh, so um, you don't have to have the, the Studio 3 and Studio 5D Planner to run MSO in your computer. However, at, at some point, we are going to develop a local instance of, of, of MSO that you are going to also be able to run in your local computer okay. using the same technology of the Microsoft Azure. Okay, so the next question we had through, or come through, asked, is it possible to have a setup for primary and secondary scopes where primary scopes are bigger than secondary scopes? Yes, uh, however, with MSO2, uh, you are going to have much more flexibility to generate the primary and the secondary scopes. Um, using, uh, the, okay, they can still see my, my screen, so using this functionality of subshapes, you can define here the size of the, the height of the stops, let's say 0 point from 0 to 0 0.3, so 30% of the, of the stop height, which was defined here in the shape, shape framework, in this case, 8 meters, okay? So if you define 0 0.3 up to 1, you are going to have the primary and also the secondary stops as different wireframes. Okay, and then you can um, create the dependencies and, and schedule them separately. So I believe I, I answered the question. Okay. Uh, if I didn't answer the question, just uh, send another question to to us, and then uh, we we will try to clarify. Okay, and it, I guess the last question I'll ask, and we still have several, so I'll, I'll make sure to answer those after the presentation, or have Darlan answer those after the presentation. Uh, but the last one that we're going to ask today, uh, the question asked is, will these still be four-point strings? in section or, or plan view, uh, or will the number of points be increased to six or eight to tighten down the shape? That's a good question. Uh, I believe we are going to, to answer this question afterwards because uh, I, it's planned. This feature, is, we are planning to introduce it, but uh, I don't know the time frame yet. 
Okay. Fair enough. All right, you guys. Well, uh, thanks for joining us today. It was uh, a pleasure to have you on. And, and Darlan, we appreciate your time explaining MSO and some of the new features. Um, next, actually, this next month we're going to have a new calendar out, so I'll be sharing that with you all over email. Um, and we'll also be sending out a recording of this presentation. So you'll have the opportunity to review some of the questions and uh, some of the techniques that Darlan showed. Uh, again, that's it. Thank you, everybody, for your time, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.